In this video, we're going to go over how to validate your I.O. using the test panels in NIMAX. We'll open that up and look at three goals that we want to achieve. We want to acquire analog input voltage measurements. We want to validate that our DAC system can accurately acquire data from sensors. For hardware setup, I have a simple NI9201 analog input module connected with a simple switching DC power supply set to 5 volts. This power supply is connected on channel 1 of my module. In order to get to the test panels, we have to navigate to our device. We do this by coming over to the devices and interfaces, expanding that portion of the tree, clicking on our real hardware, and either right-clicking and going to test panels, or clicking test panels here on the top of the frame. The purpose of the NIMAX test panels is to give you an interface to easily see how your hardware is working. It provides an easy interface to set up your analog acquisition channels and corresponding acquisition parameters. If we look at the parameters that we have available, by going to channel name, we can pick any of the eight available channels on this module. We can choose the acquisition mode, the input configuration, max input limit and minimum input limit, acquisition rate, and number of samples to read. As we work our way through these tutorials, some of these settings will make more sense. For the purposes of this tutorial, we just want to make sure that our card is reading the analog voltage correctly. To verify that our hardware is working correctly, we'll leave the mode set to on demand. This means that the software will acquire samples as fast as possible without buffering. The only option we have for this module is RSE. We'll leave the max voltage input limit to 10 and the min input voltage limit to negative 10. And because we're using on-demand samples, we don't have access to the rate or samples to read parameters. I'll keep auto scale chart selected to enable so that the y-axis of our graph scales automatically and click start. You can see my power supply is reading about 5.3 volts. This is expected for an inexpensive switching power supply like I have here connected. With this power supply, I have the option to change my voltage level. I can actually change it from five to six volts or seven and a half volts or nine volts. You can see in each of these cases, I'm about 0.3 volts over the rated power supply output. That's normal for something inexpensive like this. I'll go back down to five volts. And I can see that I'm satisfied with the way this works. To show functionality for some of the other options, if you click finite, it will gather samples to read samples at rate sample frequency. So this will acquire 1000 samples at 1000 Hertz or collect data for one second. If I hit start, it will do the acquisition and then show me the data as a result. I can also click continuous and that will perform the same function, but continuously without stopping. I'm going to switch back to on demand, uncheck auto scale chart and run again. You can see in this view, it shows me the full range from max to min voltage input limit without auto scaling the Y axis. I'll stop this VI and we'll look at some more features. The next thing we're going to look at is our simulated hardware. I'm going to open up the test panels and we'll see that because this module has additional functionality, we have additional tabs that were not available on our real hardware. We've gone through what analog input looks like. We can look at analog output, digital IO, and counter IO. Exploring these parameters for different IO types is helpful and follows the same basic philosophy as the analog input channels. You can see here, if I try to do acquisition on a simulated module, NIMAX will automatically generate a sine wave. Now that we've familiarized ourselves with the test panels and confirmed that our IO is working as expected, we can move on to the next section.